shinga. And that's what I did, guys. I shingered. But every single day, the guy would say, go. Please go to your house. It's not you that I love. I'm in love with somebody else. Running into you. Hello and welcome back to Conversations with Miss Sue Ann. Thank you so much for tuning in and for those who are joining us for the first time, you're welcome to the family. Please do subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you never miss an episode. Guys, my day ones, the ones that have had my back from day one, I really appreciate your support. Thank you so much. I see you and I love you. Guys, let's get into today's topic. Today's topic is a story time I am going to be telling you about how I became a single mother at the age of 19. Yes, today is real and personal and raw. We are gonna get there. Um, before I get into my story, I just wanted to say that there are so many perceptions towards single mothers, and a lot of people see single motherhood as hardships. Yes, it's not easy being a single mother, but it's not hardships. It's not hardships at all. And that perception is the brand that's being put on single motherhood. People brand single motherhood as desperation, desperate to get a spouse, desperate to get a partner, desperate to replace baby daddy. But in actual fact, that is not true. There are strong independent um, single mothers out there who chose to be single mothers. Yes, sometimes it comes because of circumstances that you don't have control over. But sometimes it's a choice. And sometimes people, the way people view single mothers is so totally wrong. And I am here with a series of uh, diaries that I'm gonna be talking about, diaries of a single mother. Um, the good, the bad, the real. I'm just gonna be there telling you guys about the life of a single mother. And I am going to be rebranding the whole name single motherhood because it's not what you think it's not your perception and we're gonna set the record straight <laughs> okay with that out of the way let's get into the topic um i was 18 i just finished my a-level exams and i started feeling funny i started smelling everything in the house i started noticing certain things about myself but i never suspected pregnancy Ever. Me and Bradley's dad were in like sort of like a long distance relationship actually because he was studying in Harare and I was in Peru. So I never suspected pregnancy actually. So I just continued with my life. The next thing you know, we were supposed to go to Shang, the rural areas. We get there and then a car was slaughtered. Yo guys, all hell broke loose. I started vomiting. I could smell like the blood in my nose like I just it was just terrible I just felt sick like the whole time we were Kukusha, I was so sick I couldn't do anything and people were so worried about me no one even suspected pregnancy because I was a good girl typical good girl so we come back home when we get home no one even suspects anything because I'm okay now and my friend I called my friend she was staying in her and then she said so get a pregnancy test and I was like no never it can't be it can't be because I took the morning after pill guys I remember I took the pregnancy test because she kept insisting and there were two red bold lines I was pregnant I at that moment I felt really really upset with myself I felt like I had disappointed myself, I had disappointed my family, I had disappointed my parents and because in my head and in my parents' head, I was going to be this role model, I'm the firstborn, this role model, all my young sisters and my young brothers were just going to be looking up to me and being pregnant at 19 was not the plan. And in my head, it wasn't the plan. I wanted to be an accountant. I wanted to be a boss lady. I wanted to be that lady that like young kids would look up to. I wanted to do it right, you know? Education and then marriage and then kids. That was in my head. But then, unfortunately, life doesn't happen that way. But I thank God for what happened to me. Um, 
Let's continue. I felt pregnant. The next thing, I call Bradley's dad. Call Bradley's dad and I tell him, dude, I'm pregnant. And then you know what he said? He was like, cool. His reaction, his first reaction was like, cool. I will come and we'll fix it. Because um, I'll talk to my parents and then the next thing you can move in with me and then um, we'll pay the lobola and everything. That was music to my ears. Because I never imagined myself raising a child on my own. Next thing, two months go by dude didn't come he didn't come and he he would call yes it's not like he ghosted me he would call he would text he would talk but he would never talk about that so what did i do i decided Kutizia. yes i put matters into my own hand i went to his house but i got to his house guys his parents were shocked because he hadn't told his parents his parents were shocked his mom was like what happened and I explained I came because um, I'm pregnant with your son's child and I'm here like if you're Zimbabwe you definitely know what it is that is right then the guy was actually shocked he was also shocked but the thing is they welcomed me obviously I don't think they had a choice and then they welcomed me and then they took me in the very first night um, Bradley's dad sat his parents down and he said mama daddy um i'm sorry about this but sungi is not the one he said i don't want to get married to sungi i don't want a situation whereby because she's pregnant she's going to be my wife and when he said that in my head i thought dude you should have thought about that before you made me pregnant and in my head i just thought no he's probably getting cold feet but this is the honest truth from day one he decided to give me his room and he was sleeping in the lounge because he wanted to show people and show me that he was serious that he wasn't ready for marriage and he didn't want to marry me only because i was pregnant and he was saying can she go back to her house so that we can pay damages and then we can continue with our lives and stuff like that. Guys, at that moment, I was upset with him. I was hurt and I felt so neglected. But as time went by and now, because I'm more mature and I know now what I didn't know when I was younger, I respect him, I applaud him. He did, he made a good decision for both me and him and the child because no one wants to be in a relationship where there's no love there's no compatibility and um, at the end of it all you get frustrated and there's infidelity and but yeah that's the thing I respect him so much now uh, for the decision that he made for both of us let's go on with the story guys um, I stay there why? Because I would get so many people telling me that guys do this all the time. Like, this is what guys do. And they get cold feet. And at first, they don't accept. But then later on, when the child is born, you know, everything is going to work out fine. So yeah, shinga. And that's what I did, guys. I shingat. But every single day, the guy would say, go. Please go to your house. It's not you that I love. I'm in love with somebody else. Guys. In my head, I would think this guy is crazy. He is crazy. I'm not going anywhere. I am staying. And honestly speaking, I was not doing myself a favor because every single time I would really, really get hurt. We would start fighting verbally and then later we started fighting physically. And it wasn't really good for me because uh, I was pregnant and it wasn't good for us and his family and his parents seeing us fight all the time. It wasn't really it wasn't an environment that I wanted to raise my child in but at that time I would get advice from my friends like don't worry girl he's gonna like he's just gonna he's gonna loosen up later sooner or later he's gonna get used to the fact that you're there and you're gonna be his wife and there's this notion in African minds like there's this idea in our minds that when you fall pregnant you have to get married to the person who made you pregnant but now 
I've realized that it's not real, it's not true because at the end of the day you get into a relationship and you force things and the next thing the relationship becomes an abusive relationship and then let's not even go there, right? Okay, so I stay there, I stick around two more months and it gets worse. It doesn't even get better, it gets worse. And that is when I made the decision. I made the decision to get out. I made the decision to walk out and go back home. This is what my parents always used to say. So I will not see walk home back. Every time I would tell them, so today we fought, so today this happened, so today he said this, they would always tell me, then why are you still there? And they would tell me it's your decision. It's your decision to move out if you want. And it's your decision to stay if you want. We are not going to tell you what to do. Um, but I got home though. And it wasn't easy at all. And I did it with a very happy heart. I didn't want to. The family was so amazing. They gave me so much support. They gave me so much love. They were just so welcoming. And they were excited about the baby. That's my thing for sure. Babies are a gift from God. That's what they would always tell me. And I was the only person who was whopping around because I didn't want to raise the child alone. Um, later on, I then realized that I had no choice. Uh, you know, when you become a mother, uh, there's certain things that just happen to you. You start having fears about things that you never knew would make you be afraid. You start being strong in situations that you never thought you would, be, you, would be, you would be able to handle. And that is exactly what happened to me. On the 25th of June, I gave birth to my beautiful baby. And guys, from the moment I looked at him, from the moment I held him in my arms, from the moment that he was given to me by the nurses, I fell in love, like real love, like genuine love. And there and then, motherhood kicked in. I knew there and then that I had no other choice but to be strong, to be the boss lady in his life. That is how I became a single mother. I'm not advocating for people to just go on and make girls pregnant or go on and fall pregnant and not take responsibility or even try to make it work. But if it's not working, if it's a toxic environment for the child, for you, for the other partner, the best decision you can make for yourself and your child is to walk out. Anyway, I don't want to seem like I'm preaching, but my life as a single parent has been amazing. It's twice the stress, <laughs> twice the work, it's also twice the love, it's also twice the hugs, it's also twice the memories. Guys, me and Bradley have had such an amazing run and we're still going. And I would not trade him or my life for anything. I wouldn't change a thing if I had to go back. And before I go, you guys, uh, you now know how I became a single parent at the age of 90. But before I go, I just want to give someone um, a bit of advice. Maybe a single parent, uh, maybe a parent in general, anyone. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It actually shows that you're strong, strong enough to know when you need help. So do not be ashamed to ask for help when you need help. And catch this. A child is never raised by a single parent. A child is raised by the whole community. Guys, I have to go. This is the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Bye.